Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement here in Asheville, North Carolina. And today I'm going to be hosting a palming party. So today I'm going to be teaching you the palming practice and leading you through a short guided visualization. Actually several different visualizations because everybody visualizes a little bit differently. And sometimes we have to explore different options to actually turn on our inner vision. So palming is a practice from the Bates method, which was developed by an eye doctor named Dr. William Bates. However, palming has been around for a lot longer than that. Um, Dr. Bates really popularized palming in the early 1900s, so 100 years ago. But the practice of yoga, for example, has been incorporating palming for longer than that. So palming definitely is a probably one of the most relaxing practices we can do for our eyes. And at this time, many of us are, you know, well into our own self isolation or quarantines. And, you know, we've been seeing a lot of things changing on the outside and, and receiving some stress and maybe some fear from through our eyes of what we're seeing on the news and out when we go grocery shopping and out in town or whatever. So the purpose of palming is to give you a chance to go within, um, to actually relax your mind and actually activate this insight. So we're not just interested in the eyesight, we are interested in the insight as well. So why don't we just dive right into it and we're just going to spend a couple minutes doing palming. Uh, you're going to notice that I'm going to be inviting you to take a couple breaks because if we're going to be palming for about 10 minutes or so, your arms might get a little tired or you might need to kind of adjust or move around. So that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop palming though. So we're gonna take a little break, stretch a little bit, keep the eyes closed if possible, and then go back into the palming practice for a few more visualizations. So what I want you to do right now is to get comfortable. I'm sitting in a chair right now. Um, I'm not at a desk, so I need something to support my elbows on. I don't want you to palm just with your arms floating in the air without any support because it's not very sustainable. Your shoulders are gonna get tired. So I've got these pillows right here. I'm gonna put on my lap and they're the perfect height so that I just rest my elbows so that I am in that right position so I don't have to be leaning forward. If I didn't have my pillows, I would be resting on my legs and this is okay, but I'm kind of more slouched over and I'm not as upright and aligned. So whether you are at a desk, at a table, if you can go grab some pillows, these are, are pretty firm kind of foamy pillows. Um, or if you want to, you can even just lie down on your back, but I want you to get comfortable and feel supported. And I want you to follow along with me. Now, as we get into palming, I know that some people may be joining after I've already instructed it. So throughout this palming party, I'm gonna be keep, you know, just reminding some of the basics of the mechanics of the palming as we're going through the visualization. So first, um, it is important to actually wash your hands um, before palming. Uh, I'm sure you've been hearing that a lot lately of washing your hands for preventing the spread of viruses, but it's also important before we touch our faces with our palms, we wanna make sure our, our hands are clean. So I've already washed my hands before this. Um, if you have recently, that's great. If you maybe wanna do that real quick, um, or if you have any of that precious Purell around, you can <laughs> clean, sanitize your hands. But once you've got nice clean hands, you actually, a lot of people like to rub them together to create some heat and some warmth. So if you wanna pretend like you're trying to start a fire, rubbing, a stick, rubbing sticks together, really fast, generating that heat and that friction. And you don't just have to do the front, you can rub the back of the hands, anything that feels good just to activate your hands. Some people even like to clap a little bit just to kind of wake up this area, this part of the body. You cup your hands. I lay the fingers of one hand over the other, over my forehead, and then allow my palms to rest over my eyes. So the heel of my hand is kind of resting right on my cheekbone and my knuckles, uh, where my fingers come out of the palm, that's kind of resting on my eyebrow. So sometimes I even lift my eyebrows up to kind of wedge that part of my hand underneath it. 
and then rest the heel right there on the, on the cheekbone. So I might do that one hand first and then the other hand second. But feel free to adjust and modify because the, the overall purpose here is not to push on the eyes or put any pressure on the eyes or even touch the eyes at all. It's really to block as much light as possible. So it's really, really dark. So you might have to, like I said, adjust your eyebrows, maybe adjust your hands, but you're generally trying to get the center of your palm over the center of your eye. So I don't want your fingers over your eyes. I want your fingers over your forehead. It's called palming because your palms are over your eyes. And hopefully you're nice and supported in your shoulders and your elbows so that you can be not slouching over and not you know, compromising the alignment of your spine. So we're gonna settle into our palming practice right now, and we're gonna begin our palming party. And it's really cool to be able to palm with you today, to be able to palm with multiple people at the same time, even if it is at a distance, we're all doing it in different places in our own, own spaces, but since you can't really see anything physically, it's almost like you, we can kind of connect even more, more mentally. You know, we're all doing the same palming thing together. We're all going within. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to sink into the darkness. So as you begin to maybe pay attention to your breath, maybe you wanna relax your shoulders down, make sure you're not kind of gripping or tightening or tensing any muscles. You're starting to really sink in and relax and kind of feel your body, feel where you're sitting, the contact between you and the chair or you and the ground, where your feet are making contact with the ground. You can kind of scan through all of your senses right now. You're, you're noticing what you're feeling with your feet. Maybe you can notice what you're feeling with your hands. Maybe your hands are starting to generate some more warmth already. Palming is really nice, it creates some warmth for the eyes to relax. What about your other senses though, your sense of hearing? You can hear my voice right now. Maybe you can notice some other ambient sounds in the space that you're in. So in my office here, I'm noticing the clock ticking every second. I can hear a little bit of ambient noise from downtown Asheville. And we can also notice, you know, the sense of smell or even the sense of taste. Like what, do you smell anything right now as you breathe in through your nose? Or do you have a particular taste in your mouth? So, this brings us to our sense of sight. Now we can't physically see anything right now and that's okay, because that's not the point. This is not really about our eyesight, this is more about our insight. And some people feel like they have more connection with their insight or inner vision than others. Or some people feel like they have some difficulty seeing things or imagining things or remembering things or picturing things mentally when they're palming or even when their eyes are closed. So, we're gonna experiment with a handful of different little visualizations just to see if you can see with your eyes closed. Now it's not like physically seeing, it's more just inside your head, but I want you to really start to tap into the power of your mind when it comes to your vision because technically your vision is happening in your brain, not in your eyes. It's happening in your visual cortex in the back of your brain. So. When we close the eyes, that doesn't necessarily mean that the vision stops. You know, you still see things when you sleep at night. You have these vivid, colorful dreams. And you can daydream. You can remember things from the past. So this is actually an important part of our vision. So we were just going through our different senses so let's see what happens if we start to activate the sense of sight with the help of our other senses. 
So we were just uh, going through, you know, feeling, hearing, smelling, and tasting. So let's all remember the last meal we ate. So this is probably gonna be different for everyone, but what was the last thing you ate? Might have been earlier today, might have been yesterday. Any recent meal doesn't really matter. I want you to just remember it. I want you to remember, you know, did you prepare it yourself? Did you cook it and get all the ingredients together and do the work to, to make that meal? Or did you support a local restaurant and get some takeout? No matter what it is, I want you to think about what it smelled like, what it tasted like, maybe even the texture of it when you chew it, maybe that makes even makes a sound when you bite into it or, or when you're cooking it, maybe you can hear the sizzling or, or whatever. But as you're thinking about these other senses, maybe you get a little mental picture of that meal whether it's one of the ingredients, whether it's the completed meal, it doesn't really matter, but we're actually practicing, quote, seeing with our eyes closed. You're not physically seeing that meal right now, it's already hopefully being digested in your tummy, but you can remember it and you can, essentially you're rewinding and pressing play. You're just replaying this mental movie using your mind's eye. And it might be fleeting. Like I said, different people do this differently. Some people get this really, you know, sharp, clear, colorful, vivid image and it stays there. Other people get just little flashes where it's like, oh, I think I just saw a little a little piece of the plate or, or a piece of the meal or whatever. So ultimately, I really just want you to not try too hard. I don't want you to be trying to force this visualization because palming is meant to be a relaxing time. We're not supposed to be stressing or, or trying to make something happen. We are relaxing the eyes and relaxing the mind. So that's one example of a way to visualize is just picking any recent memory, whether it's a recent meal or a recent experience or a recent conversation or a recent, even if it's a TV show or a movie you've seen, you can just think about it and you start to see these glimpses of mental pictures even though your eyes are closed. So we're gonna try another visualization, but first we're gonna take a little break for our, our arms. So like I said, if you're doing an extended palming session like we are today in our palming party, you, might, you don't wanna compromise your comfort by feeling like, oh, my arms are stiff and, or my back hurts or something, and it's like, oh, but I have to keep going, you know. That doesn't make sense because then you're not really relaxed about it. So we really want to make sure we're feeling good, checking in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my eyes closed and just very slowly peel my palms away from my face. You don't wanna do it too fast because it might be sort of a shock to your dilated pupils from the darkness. And I'm not gonna open my eyes. I'm gonna keep my eyes closed as I just extend my arms out, do a little stretch up, maybe do a little spinal bend or even a little spinal twist. Maybe you would like to stand up or maybe you need uh, some water or a little bathroom break or whatever you need. But after your little break, you pretty much just get right back into the palming. And if you are joining recently or haven't been here since the beginning of the palming party, we're just palming today. We're, this is the palming practice from the Bates method where we cover our eyes with our palms, not to touch the eyes or push on the eyes at all, no pressure on them, just blocking the light. And I'm using my palming pillows here to support my elbows so that I'm seated upright, I'm not slouching. So it's important if you're palming along with me to be supported by a table or desk or some pillows like I've got, or you're welcome to just lie down on your back. But we're gonna try a couple more visualizations um, before we wrap up our palming party today. And 
remember, I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the mental aspect of it, of what we're actually doing with our mental activity, but all the while, your eyes are getting a really deep physical relaxation. So the palming practice relaxes your eye muscles, it relaxes your optic nerves. It's really, really restorative for your eyes, especially if we're on the screen all the time. So we need to be counteracting screens with palming breaks like you are right now. So we're gonna do another visualization here. So getting into your palming, settling into that dark, warm place, relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your face, relaxing your breath, maybe taking a couple deep breaths just to kind of settle in and feel the support of the chair you're sitting in. Now within this darkness, in the very center of this big dark area, your visual field, there's a little black circle, a little sphere right in the middle of it that's a little bit darker black than the rest of the whole visual field. Maybe it's like a little black marble. So it's got a little bit of a, a glisten to it or a little shine to it. So even though it's the same color as the background, it's still visible against the background. It's a deeper, darker shade of black. And so you've got this little round marble, or maybe you want to picture it as a different type of ball. Maybe it's a black golf ball, or a black baseball, or a black soccer ball, or basketball. This, there's a lot of flexibility here. I, I, I don't want it to only be one right way to do it. You know, you have freedom to customize this. And if you, if it's something that I suggest doesn't work for you, instead of trying to force that to work, I want you to modify it and just see what pops up and works easier for you. Because everybody's mind works uniquely. So I'm using this little black shiny marble but whatever ball you've got out there in the center of that black area, you notice that it, there's also a black string attached to it. And my marble actually has some nice weight to it. It's, it's pretty heavy actually. But when this string lifts the marble up, it creates this kind of swinging motion. So first, I'm going to notice my black marble swinging like a pendulum a little bit to the left from the center and a little bit to the right from the center. And when you set a pendulum in motion, it really doesn't want to stop. So this black marble is swinging left and right out in front of me. And all I'm doing is watching this movie play in my mind. I'm not physically seeing anything. It's all imaginary. It's all pretending. It's all imaginary and visualizing and, but it's based on my memory of what a marble and a string looks like and what it would look like if it was swinging out in front of me. So as I quote, see this movie play in my mind, I'm noticing that my eyes begin to follow this imaginary black ball swinging to the left and swinging to the right. And I'm not even really controlling it. I'm not even really telling my eyes to do that. I'm just making the ball swing with my mind. Now I'm going to bring the marble back into center so that it stops swinging and I'm gonna pull it towards me and then let go of it. So now it swings on the string forward and back. So instead of watching it go left and right on the same distance or the same plane, now it's moving through space. There's some depth now. So it's actually coming in towards me and then swinging away from me. And it swings towards me and it swings away from me. And I can feel, once again, my eyes responding. The way my eyes are responding now is that when the ball swings towards me, I feel my eyes come in to focus closer. And when the ball swings away from me, I feel my eyes release to focus farther. 
So my eyes actually turn in, they actually converge or cross a little bit as it comes closer, as if I was focusing near. And then when it goes away, my eyes uncross or they diverge and they relax into the distance. So after watching the ball swing forwards and back a little bit, I'm gonna bring it back into the center, just keep it still. But now I'm going to actually move my perspective from before it was like I was sitting in a chair looking out into space at this ball out in front of me. But now I'm going to float in the air above my ball on a string because now the ball is going to make an infinity sign pattern, a lazy eight. And this is really visible from above more so than in my chair. So I'm gonna float above the ball, look down, straight down from the top of the ball as it follows this figure eight pattern. And once again, my eyes begin to follow that. And I am doing my best to not control my eyes. I'm not trying to force them to do anything. I am interested in feeling these involuntary, effortless, sort of automatic eye movements as I follow this ball in the infinity sign. Or maybe you want to do a different shape. Maybe it's going in a circle. Or maybe it doesn't follow the laws of physics and gravity. Maybe it makes a triangle or it makes like a, a random pattern. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that right now, you are relaxing your mind by giving it something really simple to focus on and you're relaxing your eyes by allowing them to be free to move around without any strain at all. So this little pendulum or this little ball can once again, be another example of what you can be thinking about or imagining or remembering or visualizing while you practice palming. Because you won't get as much benefit from palming if you just sit here in the dark without really focusing your mind on a particular intention or a visualization or some sort of meditation. It's still gonna feel good for your eyes to cover them with your palms, but if you're more interested in actually working with your brain and neuroplasticity and actually developing your senses, specifically your sense of sight, to achieve natural vision improvement, I highly recommend that you incorporate visualization into your palming practice to really enhance the benefits. And like today in today's palming party, you had something to listen to while you palmed, which probably made it even easier to visualize things. It might not be as easy if you're doing it by yourself without anything to listen to. So feel free to listen to a guided meditation or a visualization, um, listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, listen to some music. It sometimes helps to have your ears receiving something to kind of keep you on track and keep you focused. Otherwise, if you're just in silence, you'll, you probably won't do it as long as we've done it today. So this is bringing us closer to the end of our palming party today. So I just want to instruct you on a really nice way to transition out of palming. So before you remove your hands, just first of all, notice how warm they are. This skin on skin contact of your palms right on your face creates a lot of heat and warmth, which is very soothing and relaxing to all of your extra ocular muscles, the muscles around your eyes and the muscles inside your eyes. So just enjoy this warmth for just one second. And then we're gonna slowly, with our eyes closed, remove the palms from the face. Now, after palming for so long, your pupils have really dilated. And so you really wanna give your eyes plenty of time to readjust to the ambient light in the room. So uh, what I'm doing is my eyes are closed 
but I'm, I'm turning my head left and right. I'm swinging my head so that I'm going through the window here in front of me. It seems really bright, even though I know it's kind of overcast today. But I'm just giving my pupils enough time to constrict and close back down so that I don't shock myself with super bright light. And when I'm ready to open my eyes up, I'm not just going to open them normally. I'm going to do a couple little reverse blinks. I'm going to essentially take a little picture with my eyes. So this involves pretty much from a closed eye position, just flashing my eyes open for a fraction of a second. So I'm going to take a picture of my phone. So I flash open and then closed. Okay, so I have pretty good aim. I landed on the phone and my eyes were only open for a fraction of a second. So I could barely had any time to really take it in, but I got a little impression, a little image. Now I'm going to take a picture of something else. I'm going to turn my head, flash open and see what I land on. Just landed on the wall over there. Not too much to see. So now I'm going to turn over another direction, take another picture in this direction. So now I opened up and landed on a little cactus. And so now I'm just remembering the cactus. So it's like I took the picture uh, by flashing my eyes open, the shutter opened and closed. And now I'm just kind of developing the picture in my mind just for a few seconds, thinking about, huh, what did I just land on? What did I just take a picture of? And I'm going to take a distant picture. Those three pictures were near inside the room, but there's a window in front of me. So I'm going to flash open out the window and close. And turns out while we were palming, the sun came out. So it's not overcast anymore. So I just took a picture of sunny Asheville and I'm just picturing it in my mind. So remember when we're palming, we're developing these pictures and visualizations in our mind. And so now I'm using actually the outside world, my eyesight as a way to work with that visualization as well. I open and close I saw the city, but now I'm remembering the city and I'm visualizing it and continuing to quote, see that picture sort of lingering in my mind. So after you take a couple pictures around your room or out the window, then you can just kind of leave your eyes open and and kind of just maybe look around the room and notice if there's been any effect or any benefit or any change in how you're feeling or in how you're seeing because this is a vision improvement practice. It's actually a way to achieve improvements in your visual acuity without glasses or contacts. So I actually forgot at the beginning of the palming party to mention that this is really meant to be done without any lenses. So um, I was going to mention to take your contacts out if you have contacts in or, you know, you, you have to remove your glasses. You can't really palm with the glasses on, but What's important is that when you come out of palming is that you actually check in and notice, did I experience an improvement? You know, if you look around the room before you palm and then after you palm, a lot of times afterwards, things are a little bit brighter, they're a little bit more colorful, they're a little more vivid, a little bit sharper, a little bit clearer. And your eyes probably feel a whole lot better than 30 minutes ago. And so it, we want to be doing these types of things on a very regular basis because so many people are kind of neglecting their eyes. We, uh, we floss our teeth, we brush our teeth, we're maintaining our oral hygiene every day, but very few people are doing anything to take care of their eyes. So those of you here in the palming party, you just did a really, really nice self-care routine for your eyes and your eyes are very happy right now. And so they're thanking you for spending this time covering them up, giving them a little break saying, Hey, I appreciate you for all you do, all you take in for me every day. And I want to show you that I care about you and I love you. And I'm going to give you this TLC, this time to just relax, take a break and actually go within. And this is a way to counteract all the the stress or the fear or the panic or the anxiety we're sort of seeing on the outside with with the whole pandemic and we are counterbalancing that with coming up with our own inner visions uh, that are calming and relaxing to help us navigate through this so as stress levels rise we also need our relaxation level uh, levels to rise too to kind of counterbalance that so that we don't get out of balance so 
I do want to do some more of these palming parties, um, either here on Instagram or um, I did also want to announce that I'm going to be doing in April um, these free Vision Tune Up Tuesdays. So every Tuesday in April, I'm going to be doing another live streaming thing where uh, similar kind of thing today, except we don't just do palming. I'm going to be teaching you a handful of other Bates Method practices that are very relaxing and can actually lead to improvements in your vision. Because how cool would that be if you actually um, go into quarantine with a certain type of vision and then you come out of quarantine with even better vision? You're actually seeing more clearly by the end of this. Uh, that's kind of the intention I'm, I'm setting here. So um, not exactly sure whether I'm going to do those here on Instagram or if I'm going to do them on a YouTube uh, live stream video or on Facebook live stream. So I'll be announcing that um, on all my different channels, Instagram, my website. Um, so I'll be keeping you in the loop, but just stay tuned on Tuesday. It's probably going to be doing it at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Um, so just stay tuned to figure out where you can go for that. It'll likely be on YouTube, um, but uh, but I'll be posting that and sharing links and all that. So I really, really thank uh, all of you for being here, for joining my first ever palming party. Um, and hopefully it's the first of, of more to come. And uh, let me just come in here and just scroll 